Uh, hello guys, this is Mr. Carlton, and I am currently in the Castle Story prototype. So I've already played the game for 5-10 minutes, just trying to figure out how the gist of the game goes. And I'll give you a quick kind of rundown of just some of the little bit more difficult to understand mechanics in this game. So for anyone who's not familiar, this is a, a game that had a Kickstarter go on, and it was pretty badass, and it got funded, and now there's a prototype. So Castle Story is basically a voxel game that looks like Warcraft 3. So uh, let's just let it chug away here for a bit. And um, basically the biggest thing here is how to control the camera. So it does tell you if you mouse over some of these things how to do certain things. I'm not too sure what Terrain Flyby does, but in this case camera control. If you want to do it, you basically hold down the spacebar and then you can right click to change the angle and left click to drag. So anyone who's familiar with 3D software, this is kinda weird because usually it's like middle mouse or something weird, but this should be familiar to anyone who's used to dragging around in any other 3D game. Oh, and right here basically are your Brectrons. They do stuff. And um, Basically, mouse mode controls the depth, and this line tells you where you're focused. So right now I'm focused there. Um, but that's not important right now, and I'll show you basically some of the more basic building and mining and lumberjacking stuff. So first of all is selecting guys. You can either select this button to select all your idle workers, or you can drag select them on the screen. And this over here will this little uh, general menu thing will show you all the um, all the Brectrons you currently have selected. So if you want them to move without holding spacebar or anything, you basically right click where you want them to go. This is very Warcraft 3-esque. If you're used to pretty much any RTS game, you'll be pretty familiar with how this works. So I'm just going to go to a nice clear spot over here, where we got a nice variety of resources and some flat areas to build. So pretty much the biggest difference between this game and I guess any other game kind of similar to it is just everything's broken down into build orders and gathering orders and you basically attach people to a group rather than tell them to mine a tree. So what you have to do is with the lumber thing selected, click this button over here that says lumber zone and I don't think this is working 100% right but you basically left click and that's pretty much all you do. Then you select the Bricktron, and you right click on this icon above it, and then he'll go out and he'll start mining away at that tree. Uh, sometimes their pathfinding gets a little bit herpy, so he'll just keep standing there, and that probably just means he can't get to that tree. That doesn't mean you should stop, so while he's doing that, um, let's get our other Bricktrons doing some stuff. So, deselect this current tool and move to this thing. So the hammer right here is how you build stuff, and right now they're just throwing the stuff on the floor like a bunch of maniacs. If you want them to start cleaning it up, you basically have to put down a stockpile. If you've played towns or any sort of uh, town building game, stockpiles are nothing new. Basically it's a place for the Bricktrons to put all, all their resources. So in this case, we want them to put the wood, so I'm going to rotate the camera here, and let's, uh, let's find a nice place over here where we plan to build our base. So you just left click and then you can place down a stockpile. So I'm going to put down a couple of them. I'm going to be planning ahead so I'm going to put down a, a space in between. And as far as I can tell they can't walk over top of stockpiles. So you make sure you have that space. Um, and this is the other thing that's not super clear is how you deselect a brick. So as you may have noticed these buttons only select other bricks and clicking the cancel doesn't actually get rid of the brick. What you have to do is stay in the build menu hold down right click and click back. So not super intuitive and I'm guessing that will change and right now this is probably just they were rushing and it was a little bit over time but I'm sure that will be fixed eventually. Right now it's moderately annoying but you get used to it after a while and it's still really early in the game so you gotta give them a little bit of forgiveness there. And now that well I should also say they need wood to build a stockpile so it doesn't seem like any of the resource costs are listed, but anything that looks like wood costs wood, anything that looks like stone costs stone. So, simple as that. So now these guys don't have anything left to build, so 
Let, let's get them to start building a house. So we're going to use the standard 1x2 bricks. Um, I don't really want to deal with nights. So I'm just going to turn this off, actually. So it should pause the day cycle. I'm assuming that feature works. And um, let's just start laying down our house here. Um, you have to be careful about the camera perspective. Sometimes it looks like you're placing a block in a different spot than you really are. And uh, just keep that in mind. So we're just going to make it nice and not square, or, okay, I'm going to lie, and I am totally building it exactly square. And you'll notice that they haven't actually started building yet, and most of the reason for that is, well, we don't have any blocks. So before I start making the second level, I'm going to select the mining tool over here, and it creates a new mining group. And uh, we're going to go to our two unoccupied here. And uh, we're going to make a mine. So these things are a little bit different than lumberjacks, and I think this is the way that lumber is supposed to work. Is you click, you drag, and then you, sl or you let go first, and then you can select your depth. And then it'll tell you where the, la like the staircase is going to go down. Once you're kind of there, you can just select off, click your Bricktrons, and then right click on that build group. I'm not sure if these icons will eventually change, like this one will be a pickaxe, the one for the lumber will look like a, like an axe, but I'm assuming that's what will happen, and right now, again, it's pretty early in development, so I'll forgive them. Um, I don't want them to fill it all with wood, so I'll stop accepting wood. Stop accepting wood. Oh, that's too late. Okay, well, well, get this one to stop accepting wood. So. We have a lot of wood, so rather than make all the stuff out of stone, I'm going to start making some stuff out of wood. So we're just going to make a quick little hut over here, and we're going to make them out of these these things. So poop. Poop, poop. Poop. There, okay. Uh. And what's going to do with these tall columns here? Okay. I'm liking the way this is going, but I am sensing an issue with making stuff simply stack properly. Um, not sure. There's no like single block of wood yet, uh, so I guess this will have to do. I would prefer not making it like this, but hey, I don't know if I can get it working any other way. So there we go. We got our got our wooden house working. And as you can see, uh, they're all part of the same build group. If you're in a different group, you can't actually see what other people are working on. But, okay, so we got our little log cabin rocking away. And now that they've run out of stuff with the wood, they're actually going to start working on this thing here. Um, I don't like getting too far ahead, so I'm going to go to the plaque. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to say plank. But I'm just going to quickly throw a roof on this thing. Yeah, so this is what I mean about the whole camera angle is deceiving thing. It's pretty hard to tell where it's actually going to place this block. Uh, I'm going to stop fumbling with this and go on to something else. So, that, 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 that's how you place a plank. Oh, okay. Well, I can probably get out of this until these two stop accepting stone, just so we have room to stop. Uh, yeah.
Okay, so it looks like these guys are just waiting for that. What's our lumberjack doing? Let's give you a new chop zone. So if you want to do that, you basically can just click the button, click the guy, right click. There you go. I would say that was pretty, pretty easy. So some of the mechanics in this game are a little bit clumsy to get used to, but once you kind of get it, it starts making a little bit more sense. And a lot of these things aren't super clear, and I think that's just one of those things where feedback, like in terms of gameplay feedback, isn't necessarily important right now, this early in the development of the game. Whereas things like actually getting this game so it doesn't explode and crash and kill everyone's computer at runtime and all that stuff is probably more important at this stage in the game. So uh, let's just start putting a second layer on our little castle watchtower dealio here. Okay, so we are we are doing solid. We are doing a good job. We are moving along nicely. Oh, let's just see. I don't know how tall I want to make this. Let's just keep going. I'm thinking we'll probably make it like six tall. I actually don't know the building. I'm just going to make a square tower. Again, you have to be careful about your angle because some of these look like they're in a different place than they really are. Okay. I'm actually going to tell this thing to start accepting stone again. Just because right now he's not putting wood there because, well... There's no more room because this one's completely full. So, I guess we can go back in here and we'll try and figure out... I guess we can try and figure out how these planks work. Oh, I get it. So it looks like you basically place them just like any other block. So they need to be placed on top of something? Yeah, that's what it looks like. Um... Which I guess means we should probably do something. Hmm. I am not too sure how to get this plank to show up. Oh, that looks like it worked. Oh, it might actually need vertical things. Okay, let's try that. That might work. Uh, let's throw you in and you in. And you and you. Well, crazy camera angle. Sorry about that. Okay. Got this thing rocking. And neat. Okay, and we got one more piece of wood to go. Now we're just waiting on the stone. Oh, what a waste. Mobe! Mobe no! Anywho, uh, let's figure out. Let's figure out that helped. Can we place these planks now? Oh, oh god. No, no, no. Go back. Plank. Want my plank. Plank. Okay. Nope, 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 nope. Yes? Nope. Yes? Ah, no. Um. Let's see if we can figure out how to delete this stuff. V. Control Z. Control X. Yeah, this is something I still don't quite quite know how to do. Is how you actually delete? Like I am Oh. I'm not sure how I did that. I tried this before and I couldn't figure it out. It seems like in order to do it, sometimes you have to be like... Huh. I have no idea. I actually cannot explain how on earth I got it to turn yellow like that. I think you have to... Yeah, it's doing it on these. 
Yeah, I'm not sure how I did that. Wow. Let's just get rid of this. We can figure out how to fix that ramshackle hut later. They certainly go through that stuff really fast. We're actually going to get this guy to help Fine. Oran. I don't think we need two people, so Bim. Bim's man. Bim, you are going to help them dig a hole. Back to Melbourne. So, with these little gems, as far as I can tell, whoa, as far as I can tell, they will eventually be used for making more brick drones. I've never actually got this far when I was just doing my quick run through before, so I don't actually know what happens. So I guess we have to wait till our good man Bim here and his buddies. What's your name? I'm, I don't think I care. Kime, Arand, Falcor, and Bim. Some pretty hardcore names there. Quite the collection. Thank you. What is your name? Simply. Not gonna lie. I don't know how they get these names. They might even be provided by the Kickstarter backers. I think there's probably some level where you can suggest names and stuff. It tends to be in these Kickstarter deals. Oh, and I'd also like to mention how awesome the soundtrack is. Um, if you've seen the trailer, you'll know what I'm talking about. The trailer is a fine piece of cinematography. But uh, this game definitely has quite the feel to it, and it definitely screams just like soul and just, yeah, a bunch of student game designers with absolutely nothing to lose, and they're just going all out making exactly the game they want to make. I guess I also shouldn't say nothing to lose, because I guess epic failure and starve to death is something to... I guess you'd win that, if that's the right way of putting it. Yeah, because they're just taking their time. Not sure if there's actually a fast forward or anything. But I guess in the meantime, let's uh let's go explore and So these crystals, rock island, dirt island, crazy land. Well, let's check out that level of detail thing they had in that uh dev video. So apparently the way this works is the trees in the front here have like an alpha channel as you can kind of see there's like a little bit of visibility each little branch has it as you go farther away like in these trees back here you can kind of see it there stuff like this like that those trees look even less detailed the texture is starting to get muddled of course I probably shouldn't be pointing this stuff out because the whole point of level of detail stuff is to make the game run better without making it look worse not to say it looks worse but I thought it was pretty clever how they're already worrying about stuff like optimization, like this this early on into a game, and that really just speaks well for just how far ahead they're thinking. And also, if anyone's familiar, you know how much effort and time was put into this whole Kickstarter thing they did. Or, in case you're not aware, the, um, the developers of this game are both from Montreal and Canada, and in case you also weren't aware, Kickstarter is actually an American thing. If you're from a different country, you actually can't make a Kickstarter. You have to be an American citizen or have a company or whatever, and that's basically what these guys have to do. They have to jump through a whole bunch of hoops in order to get this Kickstarter to even happen. And of course there's alternatives to Kickstarter, like Canada has Indiegogo, Indie, Indiegogo, which is similar, but it just doesn't quite have the same volume of people that Kickstarter has, because not just Americans shop there. So, uh, they made the right decision there by basically choosing to jump through hoops now to kind of like, like increase their exposure later. And it definitely paid off, because this game is certainly getting the exposure it deserves. Mm, I think we might have to build a staircase, because it doesn't look like he's gonna going to put through the effort there and try and climb up for me. So, it's, yeah, that was the problem. He doesn't want to climb. He's just lazy. Look at you. You lazy little brick So let's just make a nice little staircase. This is doing all the hard work of 
placing all these blocks. We'll give someone else the room. Because clearly the dude chopping down the trees and everything is probably working much harder. At least that's my guess. Don't know how much more we need. Oh, I don't know why he's building up there. But yeah. I don't actually know if they have the enemies in here yet. Um, I guess we can turn the day-night cycle on. I'm assuming it's like Minecraft, where bad guys only spawn at night. But I don't actually know. Actually, let's go find out where that gem is at. Are we at the gems? Oh. Yes? One of them seems to have vanished. Oh, wait. Barrels. Barrels. Do we need barrels? This can be picked up and carried. Oh. Okay, well. I have a feeling these crystals are rare or something, so let's go, uh, a little stockpile in this place here. There we go. Did that help? I don't know what these do. We have that other crystal yet. That would be a good answer. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. I'm trying to figure out if we can dismantle this ugly hut we made. This abomination to architecture and design. Or should I say just amazing? Yeah, let's see. How do how do we remove stuff? Let's see. Can we uh, overlap it and Oh, that's not doing anything. Okay. Maybe this is probably a horrible idea, but let's go let's go here. And, uh, okay. That works. That's interesting. If you right click, you can actually tell them where to put the stairs. So I'm going to put them there. And we'll get the dude who has been mining super hard. This guy, you fell for. You're going to now dismantle this house. Is that working? Or are you going to dig a hole into the floor? Uh, it looks like he might be digging a hole into the floor. But not what I wanted. Oh, we need to get rid of some of these. Uh, we need to give you more stuff to mine. Or build. Because it looks like you can't actually build any higher. Okay. It looks like this is the end of the line. Okay. Okay, uh, okay, 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 okay. I guess we should put another layer of stair in. And start working on this next level. Okay. So I guess I should answer the question that some people would inevitably ask, especially if they don't read descriptions and all that stuff. He's, uh, Oh my god, how do I get this game? Um, you can, I believe, pre-order it. Don't don't quote me. I'll tell you for sure in the description to make sure you read it. But at the time of me recording this, I actually don't know if you can still get early access to this game. It may have been like Kickstarter backers or PayPal backers only. Oh, here we go. Yeah, that's totally working. Um, yeah. You may have to have actually, like, pre-ordered the game sort of deal in order to actually get access to the Kickstarter, which in that case would kind of be stupid. I'm sure you can get it. Again, check the description. The description will know. I do not know anything. Be careful with those logs. And also, it may just be me, but it looks like they're done mining. So. This is something I have no idea if it works, but let's uh, 
tried deleting this. Does that work? Yeah, that totally does. I'm going to get all of you guys to help do this. Now we have a bunch of floating logs. You guys are making a mess. Ah! Can we need more stockpile here? Maybe make, make some of these. You crazy man. Okay. Oh man, look at that mess. You're making a huge mess. What are you doing? Oh, and Timmy. And his buddy there look like they're having fun all the time. What are you doing? Nah. We need to rescue him. Looks like he's stuck in there. Again, this is a prototype, so in case anyone's not familiar with the way game development works is there's like a couple different stages that a game goes through before it's considered actually shippable, like as in you'd buy it from a store. Uh, Minecraft kind of ruined this whole system, but basically every game has an alpha, beta, gold master, and release, and all that stuff. So if anyone's played like a public beta on like an MMO or something, those are pretty much the definition of a beta. The game is finished. They do not intend to add many features. This is mostly to fix bugs. And that's what beta is. Beta is fixing bugs. Alpha is when you're still like... Most of your features are in. All the really difficult to kind of get there features are finished. You basically have like this, the core of your game. So in this case, this is not an alpha. This is a prototype. So basically the only thing that a prototype has to do is prove your most difficult ones. So in this case it'd be yes Unity, which is the engine this game is built in, is a viable platform to build a voxel-esque style game. So this sort of game is doable. That's what the prototype proves. It also proves that okay hey this these mechanics work well enough that you could build a game on it. So there you go. That's pretty much all you need. And it also proves a couple other things, let's, uh, before I get too far into this rant, save that guy. Fixy, fixy. Or sit there, stupid. Okay, there we go. So, basically, the prototype is to prove a point. It's basically, just, so someone looks at your game from the outside, they look at your prototype, and they kind of get an idea of what your game's supposed to be about. But the thing about prototypes is this may or may not have anything in common with the actual game in terms of they may completely rewrite it from the prototype to the actual version they intend to release. And that, that's normal. Prototypes are something that you make five or six of. You might make one simply to prove combat is fun. You might make another one just to prove that multiplayer even works. You'd have one that's your multiplayer prototype. It simply proves that you can make a lobby and people can join it. People can invite their friends and sit in a chat room. They don't even have to have the game in there. It's just simply to prove the server infrastructure works. Um, and they're basically meant to be pretty much throwaway. Of course you might still use them and all, everything you learn from the prototypes is very important. You need to know if your game is even fun. And that's kind of what prototypes are for. Just make the game fun before you've invested a whole bunch of time into something that may not even work. So we're just gonna keep mining away at this and see if we can free Teme and F. Someone's name. I think that's Felcor. Can I get you out of there? What if I tell you to do this? I think they're dead. Okay. Wow. Hmm. Hmm. I'm not sure how you did that. Well. No sense stopping here. We must go deeper. Oh god. 
What is this? Oh, by the way, the way you zoom is mouse wheel in space, apparently. Hmm, kind of curious as to even if those guys are rescuable. What is the dude that's building everything? Where are you? Well, you can't actually get there. That's why you stopped building. Well, let's try this plank thing again. Okay. I think I get it. I think I get it. I think I get it. Okay. So pretty much. Plank is not what we want. We want to do... I guess we can make... One of those? Don't know what that will accomplish. One of these? One of those? One of these? And we'll fill the whole rest of it with stone, because I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. Um, uh, uh, I should keep him busy for five seconds. And then of course he'll be off to do something else ridiculous, and I won't know how to do it. So, in case anyone's wondering, I don't know if any of this stuff was actually covered in the live stream. I watched maybe the first five, ten minutes of it, and then I rushed home from work to go play it. Oh, that totally worked. We have them safe. They are now free from captivity. Tim and Falcor. Or, where is he? Yeah, there's Timmy. There's Simple. You. Mine. Mine like you mean it. So I guess that is not the way to take apart a house. Because that seemed to cause more damage than good, and now this place is full of wood. So, this is now our raw wood stockpile, and we will, uh, leave, leave it alone. Because physics hurts, apparently, and glitches you out into the floor. And that's part of the fun in playing an unfinished game. And even a finished game for that matter. Bat bug bugs bugs are fun, but not for programmers. They they stress and freak out about bugs. And I'm being talked to on Steam, that is not that is not you. Uh give me a second. Oi, go away. I are recording. Should probably just find myself an offline, but, but, yeah, okay, well, I guess I will do a second video, once I've actually made something impressive and not terrifyingly disgusting, not that this is that terrible, but I'll find out if crystals do anything, and I'll make a video about it or something, but until that time, this has been Mr. Carltron, Mr. Carlton, or whatever my YouTube channel says I am, and I shall see you next time.